Today's event is, like I said, Kitchen Fairy Godmother Chat with uh, Susan Spungen and Melissa Clark. When the Cherry Bomb team was talking, we were like, who are the two people you would love to have perched on your shoulder in the kitchen? And we couldn't think of anyone better than these two. Um, they both have beautiful cookbooks that came out this year. Um, I have them right here and I love them so much. Melissa's Dinner in French. We're gonna talk about this book. Melissa also has a book um, about cooking with kids that we'll chat about. It just came out. And then Susan's gorgeous open kitchen book, um, which is another beautiful cookbook. Uh, I'm sure for those of you out there who are cookbook collectors, you have them in your collection. A little bit about each woman. Melissa Clark is a columnist for the New York Times. She is a prolific cookbook author. I have lost count after like three dozen. So we'll have to ask Melissa how many cookbooks she's actually written. Um, and then Susan uh, is an amazing food stylist, one of the best food stylists on the whole planet. And she has worked on so many movies that you've seen like Julie and Julia, Eat, Pray, Love, and it's complicated. And if you've seen those movies, you know how many amazing food scenes are in those movies. So let's uh, let's welcome Susan Hi. and Melissa. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you two? I'm great. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see Get the tail out of the out of out of my face. Um, <laughs> It's so good to see you both. I miss you so much. Normally, I know. in a normal year, I would see you both all the time. And I know, but we, we just chatted the other night, right? So uh, we that did. was good, yeah. We did. Susan and I had an epic one hour Zoom and uh, I forgot to open a bottle of wine for that, but that would have been the smart thing <laughs> to do. So, um, but great to see you both. And congratulations again. You know, you put out beautiful books this year and they really are treasured parts of my cookbook collection. Thank you. Uh, so I and I said this on my Instagram. Um, you two are just, you know, two of my favorite people to interview. And I'm really thrilled that we get to talk about Friendsgiving and Thanksgiving and your cookbooks and, and more. Did you know that Melissa and I are friends and we've known each other a long time? You know, that's when we when we were like, let's interview them together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of had a hunch that you two were friends, but yeah. uh, but I'm happy that you confirmed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, all right. So um, before we get into uh, the books and Thanksgiving menus and what you're making and how you're celebrating, I wanted to talk a little bit about your biographies and your careers because you both have just had remarkable careers. Um, Melissa, I'm going to start with you. Like I said in the intro, I have lost track of how many um, how many cookbooks you, you've worked on and produced. I know, so I lose track too. Sometimes I lose track. Um, I'm 43. Oh my God. Oh my God. Really? I'm writing uh, that. Susan's like- I know, no, I started, I mean, I started right after college. I started really in grad school while I was in grad school. So, you know, and um, a lot of them were small uh -huh. and some of them took a long time, like dinner in French and some of them were faster projects. Some of them were my recipes. Some of them were chef's recipes. A lot of them were chef's recipes, mm -hmm. which is a very different pace because, you know, when you're yeah. working with chefs, you are, you're, you know, they're giving you 50% of what you have. So right. Right. It, it's a whole People don't thing. realize chef's recipes are some of the hardest recipes to work with because they're not designed for home cooks. That well, is, and they might just be oral. <laughs> yeah, mostly they are. But at least like you don't have to, like you've got, you're working with something with a goal, like you've tasted the dish. You know, I mean, I don't yeah. know. So, you're, yeah. when you do recipe development like I feel like the dish keeps evolving and changing right. so I start off right. with a concept I'm like yeah. I'm gonna do you know um roasted squash with like gruyere and I don't know pomegranate uh -huh. molasses and then so it, that would actually be terrible but something better than <laughs> that. That, sounded good. that sounded good to me sounded good but then by the end of it, I have like, you know, chicken thighs with, um, you know, cherry tomatoes and paper. I mean, it's just like, so. But Wait, so 43, what, I should know this because I've interviewed you so many times. What was the very first cookbook? Okay, the first cookbook I ever wrote was a bread machine cookbook. Oh my gosh, uh, in the right. 90s. Oh my and, God. Um, my publisher gave me four bread machines and I had them going 20, it was a six week deadline, six weeks to do a hundred recipes. And I oh had them go four hours a day and I would get up at four in the morning and like feed the bread machines to chest another loaf. <sighs> Wow. Can you even get a bread machine now? It's not the machine I, du jour. <laughs> seriously, I, I, yeah, you definitely, my sister still uses hers though. People yeah. love their bread machines. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 
I've never used a bread machine, but maybe Donna, uh, I should note that Donna and Kat from Team Cherry Bomb are working behind the scenes and we'll be sharing some links. And Donna found the bread machine cookbook. <laughs> oh my God, it still exists <laughs> in the world. <laughs> I need to buy, I should buy one for our Cherry Bomb uh, cookbook collection. Yeah, I don't but know anyway. that you need I don't know that you need that, no. <laughs> but 43 cookbooks. I mean, we were barely able to produce one cookbook here at Cherry Bomb, so I can't even- but you're also working with a bunch of different contributors, which I think is a lot harder. <laughs> true, it is true. Hard. Um, and yeah. you are also a columnist at the New York Times. Tell us what your column is all about. Um, it's called A Good Appetite. Mm -hmm. It is, um, you know, it's kind of changed over the years, but mm -hmm. right now I think what I'm really focusing on is trying to get so, uh, trying to just give people something that, you know, not necessarily a weeknight recipe, but something that is accessible enough to, um, so it's, I guess I'm trying to like reach people's sweet spots, like the thing that you really, really want to try, but um, with a slightly new twist. And I don't know, I mean, how do I describe my, my column is, I guess I'm trying to make craveable food, just yeah. something that sounds absolutely delicious that you know you can make and that you know it's going to work. Um, it's seasonal. It's very fresh. Um, and um, it's always just a little bit, maybe something that you haven't seen before, I hope. Okay. I love that. All right, Susan. Yes. So you, how does one become a food stylist? Oh, well, you know, I'm so much more than that, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We'll talk about that. But I find, I, you know, I'm obsessed with food stylists. I just, well, I food styling was stylist. kind, kind of my fallback position <laughs> when I left my job. At Martha Stewart Living, where I was the food editor for twelve long years. So, um, you know, that's and something. You were I one of the. You were one of the first editors at the magazine. Well, I was the founding food editor, so I yeah. was the I was the the head mama of all the mostly women in the kitchen. I mean, we used to have a couple of brave men that would try to come into the kitchen, but mostly it was uh, just us and. Uh, so when I left that job after 12 years, I wrote a book almost right away, my first real book that I did on my own, Recipes, a Collection for the Modern Cook. Mm -hmm. And and then when that didn't do as well as I'd hoped, then I fell back on food styling because that was just okay. what I knew how to do that paid my bills. So, you know, that's, and, and I do love to do it. And then Julie and Julia came along and then, you know, I mean, you, you talk, I, those things last so long. It's like each one was like a three month job somewhere in the last 10 years, but, but I will always be remembered for them. So, which is great. That's the wonderful thing about film. And I actually love all three of those films that you mentioned. Yeah. And so great. They're really fun. I love when they come on TV. I just, I love to watch them and, you know. It's a lot of fun. But how do I become a food stylist? It's just, honestly, I think I'm just a frustrated artist. I studied fine arts and um, I often say I'm a frustrated artist. And to me, it's just like you, you have creative uh, skill and it can be applied in a number of different ways. So that's, that's one way that I apply my creativity and my visual, uh, my love of visual art, really. So I have to ask, what scene of all those movies was the most memorable to work on? Either because it was so complicated, it's complicated, because it was so complicated or just so amazing. Well, probably, I mean, off the top, well, two things. There are a lot, there's a lot of stories behind the, the Dover soul in, that opens up Julie and Julia, uh -huh. which was actually shot very close to the end, not at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I have to make sure, can you say something? Oh, can you hear us? Oh yeah, I wanted to make sure if it was where, yeah, sometimes my AirPods go off. Um, so that, that Dover soul scene was very hairy. And I think if you look wow. it up, there's a story, I think Christine Mulkey, I think I wrote about, might've written about it or Kim Steverson, uh -huh. one of them. There's some fun stories, which those guys can link to. There's a couple of good stories. Okay. Um, cool. So that was memorable because it was super like scary and hairy. Like I only had a couple of fish and we were uh -huh. shooting at Provence, what had been Provence restaurants when Vicky and Mark were changing it over to mm -hmm. 100 acres and it happened to be empty. That's how you get movie locations and uh the fish were sticking i didn't want to buy too many because they were expensive and then the guy that was supposed to fillet it got pressed into service as a waiter so he went into wardrobe and we thought he was going to cook the fish and it was just like ah! 
And it was so important. It opens the movie. So oh it was like very scary because we almost didn't, when you have an entire crew mm -hmm. and Meryl Streep and Stanley Tucci and Nora Ephraim waiting for you and you're like in the kitchen freaking out. Um, yeah, it's like, it's, it's hairy. It's, you know, and then, and then you have the one fish that is perfect. The guy fillets it, do it in one take and you're done. But you oh. know, could it, it could have gone another way. <laughs> Oh my oh, God. God, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, uh, let's jump into what you two are doing for Thanksgiving. Before we talk yeah. menus and, and some recipes, uh, what are you doing? I, I, I still don't know what I'm doing for Thanksgiving. What are I you know doing? what I'm doing. What I know what doing? I'm doing. Yep. I'm having six people over. Mm -hmm. We're going to be outside. Okay. I'm cooking everything outdoors in uh -huh. my Traeger. <laughs> I have two Traegers and yeah, a Weber. Actually. <laughs> and actually, we also have this other grill that's like an Argentinian style grill with a rotisserie. So uh -huh. I'm trying to think of what vegetables I can get spinning on the rotisserie or something. Wait, you have um, four different grills? Oh, yeah. No, that's not counting my gas grill, which is somewhere else. Yes, I have <laughs> I have an outdoor kitchen area that has uh, a Weber, uh, a fire, a, a wood burning <laughs> open grill and two Traegers. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly obsessed with um, cooking on fire. So Clearly. it should be fun. So I'm going to I actually asked, I'm redoing a true potluck. I told everyone to bring something and I didn't even ask them what it is. Mm -hmm. True <laughs> potluck. You're hoping you're not going to get like five roasted cauliflowers, right? right? I don't right. think I will. I don't think I will. I think, you know, there is some luck in potluck. I think it usually works out pretty oh, well. So, and um, I think, you know, I know, we know everybody. The one, our one friends that actually have restaurants in New York are, they are getting tested right before they come, but we're doing everything outside. We have a sink with hot water. I'm gonna have everybody wash their hands before we start and we'll spread out to eat outdoors. That's what we're doing. And I'm looking forward to it. Everyone was very excited to come. Oh. And so far the weather looks good. I mean, yes. that's the big thing, you know, at yeah. least in, in, in the New York area. Yeah. I'm like, please yeah. let it be a, you know, nice on Thanksgiving. 52, to yeah. yeah. 52 and partly sunny so oh, and even perfect. if it rains and we're going to build like a fire in the fire pit and okay. I'm hoping all those things keep it a bit warm you know outside like lighting right. all those fires yeah it should <laughs> Melissa how about you it's just oh, and 1 30 wait I forgot to mention we're doing lunch at 1 30 yeah because that's when you yeah. need the sun so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah we're doing it's just the three of us it's just I'm going to go visit my you know my mom lives in Brooklyn not too far mm -hmm. but She's, you know, we all, we're trying to keep our distance because, oh. you know, we want to make sure she's safe. So we're going to yeah. go over early just outside to see her. She can't be outside for very long. Yeah. Um, so I'll drop off food and then we'll come back here and have an, uh, just the three of us have a meal. Yeah. And I'm doing it. I'm doing a duck. Yeah. Oh, just, okay. Yeah. Great. We are, we're going to segue oh, right okay. into the, oh, sorry. Well, that's, okay. that's, that's, a, that's a good. perfect segue right into the protein. <laughs> so you're doing a duck. Tell mm -hmm. us how yeah. you're doing the duck. I'm gonna roast it just really simple. I'm gonna, you know, slow roast it, like kind of like roast confit kind of thing. Nice. I'll probably, you know, I'll, I'll cure it a couple of days before. Um, and you know, tell us what do you mean by that, you'll cure it? So I will do a salt and spice rub all over it. I'll prick it all over. Okay. And um, I don't know, okay, well, let's discuss. Susan, let's discuss, <laughs> let's all discuss. Should I blanch the duck first? Mm -hmm. So, which gets rid of some of the fat. My inclination is not to, but maybe I should reconsider. Should I blanch the, so one way to go is just to prick the skin, rub it with a, a salt, sugar, and spice rub, mm -hmm. um, and with lots of grated orange zest in it, you know, and bay leaves and all, and then just put that puppy in the fridge mm -hmm. with, or should I blanch it, then do that, and then, you know, put it in the fridge and let it dry out. So I, I, I don't know, Susan, mm -hmm. what do you think? Well, I, I have to say, I for a whole duck, the breath, you know, if we think it's a problem with turkey, it's really a problem with duck, with that the, the breast gets really overdone when the legs get done. So I don't know. I think oh, I would cut, I cut it them, up. I cut them off early. Oh, oh so, I, okay, that's good, that's good. Because otherwise I think I would cut it up and confit the legs and then do the breast separately later. But I don't think I would blanch it because there's still gonna be a ton of fat, no matter what. Yeah, and I love that fat. I mean, that's the thing. I keep thinking yeah. about blanching, and I'm like, but I kind of want that mm. fat for my. Nah, I don't think it'll be worth it. I don't think okay. it would be worth it. Okay. Yeah. So then, good. That was my inclination. Good. I have nothing to add. 
<laughs> I've never Anybody been, wants I've, to make a comment about how I should do my duck. I am taking all suggestions. So uh, <laughs> go ahead and put it in the chat. <laughs> I'm love making a turkey, duck. but anyway, I'll let uh, Curry. I'll let you. <laughs> leave no, the I was just gonna say I've never made duck at home, but I love to order duck when I'm in a restaurant because it's one of those things that I just yeah. don't make at home. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's your main protein, Susan. Mm -hmm. What's your main, are you? Oh, I'm doing a turkey. That's how the whole thing got started. Like I usually order a turkey from a, a farm out here in the Hamptons that, and they take orders starting in like August. And, and I was like, you know what? I'm just ordering a 14 pound turkey and then we'll see what happens. Okay. You know, worst comes to worst. I'll either cancel the order or I'll cook it anyway. I love leftover. So, um, and then as I mentioned it to a few people, everyone was really excited to come. So um, I feel very comfortable with the size of our group and who's coming. And so I'm cooking the turkey on the Traeger. I, and the last couple of years I've done that. I've done, I've got a bigger group the last few oh. years. So I've done one inside the oven behind me <laughs> and one on the Traeger. And every year people go nuts for the Traeger turkey. Okay. And it is really good. I put spice rub all over it. Yeah, tell us, and, do you, do you so you do a dry brine? Um, I, I might, I might do it ahead of time, which is a dry brine is really just seasoning it ahead of time. So yes, I might, but it, I don't even know if I really need it, but I'll try, I usually try to do messy things the day before. Plus I have to get it on really early mm -hmm. to have lunch. So, um, yes, I probably will season it and get it all ready the day before. And what I love about cooking a turkey on a Traeger, and I know they're not our sponsor, but I am. <laughs> I do really like it. Love and for it. chickens too, is that it cooks it on all sides. You don't get any of those um, weird flabby parts on the bottom because it's sitting in a roasting pan and liquid. It gets really crispy on all sides. Yum, so good. That's and do you, stuff, do you stuff it with anything? No, I'm not gonna stuff it, but I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. And oh. I've been wanting to do this for years and Melissa, you probably know what it is. Um, so years ago on uh, Parts Unknown on Anthony Bourdain's show, he did this segment with uh, Daniel Boulou in Lyon and his family. And they stuffed a pumpkin with bread and mushrooms and, and all this stuff. And then they cooked it in this outdoor oven. And for years, I had been wanting to try this recipe. And Daniel Boulou has gotten kind of famous for it. And oh. he's, there's a bunch of recipes if you look online, but Parts Unknown, which I just repaid $1.99 to watch the episode on Amazon. Um, <laughs> and then they cooked it in this old wood burning oven, but I'm just gonna like put it in the Weber or the Traeger. Wow. Okay. And that's gonna be my stuffing because I'm gonna put bread and stuff in this pumpkin. And I love it. I love that grill. idea so much. You could do that in the oven too, like for people who You don't could, have absolutely. Yeah. I think that's great. Instead of a casserole delicious. dish, why not, right? Yeah, in the pumpkin. Oh, I'm going to show you the pumpkin I have. This is what inspired already have, it. She already has the pumpkin. Have I have I bought anything or done yeah. any advanced anything? I have only, well, actually I have the duck in my freezer, so I have done that. No, no. This has been sitting on my table since Oh, like, it's September. a beautiful cheese pumpkin. Yes, and that's exactly what he used. Okay. And we, we belong to Quail Hill Farm, and we so we get all of the stuff. Yeah. Um, and they had, like, at the end of the season, just, like, bins full of squash and pumpkins. And I picked that one up, and we keep saying, oh, my God, we have to use some of the squash yeah. we have. And, and I was like, oh, I have a great idea. So, so really tell us again. You're stuffing it. You stuff it with bread. Yeah. With bread. I'm, go I'm going to cut the top off, okay. like here. Cut it off here, uh -huh. scoop out all the stuff, mm -hmm. and then you layer it with um, slices of sourdough, which I'll have used my own homemade sourdough, of thin course. slices. And like he kind of toasted them first. I'm going to just copy it from what I saw. Mm -hmm. And then he had like sauteed mushrooms, bacon, gruyere cheese, and like cream. Yeah. I may not use all cream, maybe milk or cream. And uh, you just sort of pour all of that in the pumpkin, put the lid back on, and then stick it in the oven until it's soft. I mean, that has to be good, right? That has to be good. You know, I've done, I've done something like that without the mushroom and the bacon, just kind of the bread, like the bread, yeah. you know, cheese. And, oh, you know what I did once, which was really good? I made fondue. Oh, and I poured it in a... In a in for a, Thanksgiving? No, this is just like, with, I'm just talking like what you can do with the pumpkin as a vessel. Yeah. So yeah, I roasted yeah, yeah, yeah. actually an acorn squash. Cause uh, it was small. Oh, and, yeah. um, and then I poured fondue in oh, the squash. Fun. And then oh, kind of just ate the squash with the fondue. That, that sounds was, great. Oh yeah. Cause I love squash and cheese is a great combo. So um, I do have one vegetarian, but I kind of don't want to leave out the bacon. So I might make a little squash for her. I oh. love that. So that's going to be your stuffing. Melissa, yeah. And I don't think someone will bring stuffing. So yeah. 
That's going to be the yeah, stuffing. No, because you didn't ask anyone what they're bringing. I didn't. <laughs> Melissa, what's your stuffing this year? Uh, well, first of all, I might actually all do, right. I, I do a classic stuffing, totally classic. Um, just like, you know, pan de me, just white bread or baguette or something really, you know, and then classic, you know, egg and tons of leeks, sage, um, gar a little bit of garlic, um, and then the eggs and broth, lots of broth, like good homemade chicken stock. Sorry, I had to put the shade down. Make it in a casserole <laughs> dish. But now I'm thinking maybe what I do is I bake it in a pumpkin <laughs> in my oven. <laughs> in my <laughs> what a great idea. <laughs> The only thing is, what, do I need to pre-bake the pumpkin since I'm not going to be doing it out of the uh, oven to have the intense heat on the outside? Should I pre-bake? Because it's not going to, you know, a, a stuffing's done in half an hour, 40 minutes. No, no. Oh, then you God. would want to pre-bake the pumpkin. I would pre-bake it. So I would pre-bake yeah. it, oil it, pre-bake it, then add the stuffing, and then I'd have like a pumpkin -y. Oh, that sounds so good. And then you get the <laughs> crisp on top, tons of butter on top. That Yum. sounds so That's good. Sounds I think you should do so it. so good. I think okay, you should I'm do gonna it. Okay, I'm going to do it. You two yeah. need to take pictures of your pumpkins. Yeah, I know. We will. Susan, can yeah. you can we please exchange? Oh yeah. Pictures? Oh, there'll be pictures. There will oh, be good. pictures. Good. All right. I'm so terrible got... at taking pictures on Thanksgiving because we always do it in the evening. Right. Uh, right. Natural, Same here. No light. Everything looks like shit when I excuse me. Everything looks terrible. <laughs> um, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send reminders to you both. Okay. okay. So we've got the protein. We've got the stuffing. Um, let's talk about your cookbooks for a second. So Susan, sure. I don't think I yeah. showed this to everybody. We've got, uh, oh, but it's behind the picture. Do it on the other side. Carrie. Do it on the other side. Yeah. yeah Cause it's behind our, it's yeah, there you go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we've got Susan's open kitchen and we've got Melissa's dinner in French. I would love for you two to pick a recipe from each of your books that would make a perfect Thanksgiving dish. Uh, who yeah. wants to go first? Go ahead, Melissa. You go first. Okay. Uh, well, okay. Um, <laughs> Actually, I don't have I don't have dinner in French like sitting right here just because I have the new one. But um, so, Wait, Carrie, us, can you find show, us, it? show us the new one? Um, so this is the new. This is the kids' cookbook. It's called mm. Kid in the Kitchen, and I wrote it for um, you to cook with your kids. Actually, not even to cook with your kids. Just give this to your kids and send them off. Um, it's to help. I, I really, you know, my daughter's twelve, and I just watching her and her friends take an interest in cooking made me really want to write a book geared oh. toward them. So it's perfect for, you know, ages eight to 14. But in dinner in French, I have a really good recipe. I have um, a winter right. squash recipe right. with hazelnut and, and lime zest. Winter squash with hazelnut and lime zest. Yeah, so maybe butternut squash. Maybe oh, I have meat. something so similar to that, Melissa. Ooh, of course. Great minds think alike. Yeah, Melissa, I'm us, gonna show you mine. Tell us what's in the, uh, in the dish. I can't remember. <laughs> I just remember <laughs> that juicy. <laughs> roasted butternut with lime and hazelnuts. Yeah, that's it. That one? Okay, let's see. Page 255 for wow. all of you following along. Thank you. If you have Melissa's cookbook, let's all turn to page, feel like the school teacher, let's all turn to page <laughs> 255. Here we go. And there's a photo of you at the farmer's market. Wow. <laughs> In France. <laughs> In France. Oh, In France, back when we could go to France. Remember that? Oh. Look how similar this one is. What, I can't see it. What is it? It's oh my gosh, yeah. It's cabo it's called I call it kabocha candy because it tastes like candy with uh, toasted pepitas and also lime and uh, yogurt. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's walk through this one. Roasted butternut. But that's squash not the one I'm suggesting. With lime and hazelnuts. So it's olive oil, butternut squash, sea salt, black pepper, lime juice, freshly grated lime zest, garlic clove, red pepper flakes, anchovy fillets, chopped toasted hazelnuts, and two scallions. It sounds like me. <laughs> and I think I just, so I think I just roast it and then make a vinaigrette with that. Yeah, it's super, I yeah, mean, you can tell from the length of the recipe, it's super simple. It's it is super, I wish I had a photo of that recipe yeah. in the book, but it's really pretty, it's colorful. The hazelnuts oh, no are nice and they're unexpected and they're great on your Thanksgiving table because you know how on Thanksgiving stuff can be like really soft, like everything is soft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this, the hazelnuts give it a nice crunch and contrast. So I would say that's a good unexpected Thanksgiving recipe. Susan, what's yours? Well, mine is not going to be simple. I actually, I do want to point out that I have a sec, I have a menu section and I do have one called everything but the turkey, where wow. I give you all the recipes in the book that I think will be good for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. And I have smoky cheddar crackers, green bean salad with tahini and quinoa, Brussels sprouts gratin with speck and rye crumbs, which is oh, that really sounds, good. That sounds perfect, actually. Root vegetable tian, caramelized fennel with citrus and olives, 
kabocha candy with yogurt and toasted pepitas. And then my favorite, the butternut squash tart with the cranberry and pomegranate glaze. This is my favorite because people go gaga over it. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm going to make little ones in here. Oh, oh, cute. Why, Susan, I'm looking for it right now. Why do people- Oh, it's on gaga? page 317. 317. Um, it just is so delicious. So pretty. <laughs> it's got graham crackers and then a thin layer of chocolate and then a thin layer of essentially pumpkin pie filling, but it's butternut, mm -hmm. homemade butternut squash mm -hmm. roasted. And then a thin layer of um, cranberry pomegranate glaze and then pomegranate seeds. So and beautiful. And beautiful. I've been flattered many times on the internet by people who have imitated it. <laughs> you know, I mean, okay, so here's the thing. Let's, Susan, let's talk about the fact that butternut squash, if you were making homemade pumpkin pie without, you're not going to use the stuff in the can, yeah. butternut squash is better than pumpkin, right? Well, guess what? That's what's in the can. That's what's I've in the told. can. Yeah. No, it's yeah. Butter yeah. Squash. yeah. So people keep asking me about like buying big pumpkins or like yeah. even these pumpkins, it's not as right. good. Butternut right. squash is Absolutely. the best pumpkin <laughs> is what is in the can of Libby's. That's butternut yes. squash. This is it's what I'm told. Plus. I probably, I found out from you, probably. Probably. Uh, I'm a little looking obsessed at the chat. Donna just said, what? I, I think a lot, I of people, a lot of people don't realize that that's been a I secret know. for a long time. Yeah, because pumpkin has, can be watery. I think that mm -hmm. butternut squash has is more reliably yeah. flavorful and not so watery. So And also not so grainy. You know how butternut squash yeah. has velvety texture? Yeah. yeah. And it's just so, it's, it's really quite perfect. So if you want to make it from scratch, it's so easy. Just, yeah have your squash, roast it, scoop yeah. it out, and that's all. Yeah. yeah. So is there, you two might Even know- the organic stuff. Specific oh, brand recommendations, but is there a canned pumpkin, pumpkin, that you like better than others? I go for Libby's. <laughs> There's okay. organic ones, but I worry that they're not as consistent as Libby's, you know? I have used the organic one. Um, I've been using the organic one for testing. I did a lot uh -huh. of pumpkin recipes yeah. this fall for um, yeah. the New York Times. And I use the organic one the whole mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Um, and I found it perfectly fine. Okay, so good. These, good to know. This has a slightly thicker texture. It's like a little, and the organic one's a little thinner, but I didn't find that it made a difference yeah. when I used it. Okay. Yeah. So. Susan, tell us a, uh, a savory side that you'll be making. Oh yeah. So, well, I think that actually there's, it's one of the few that ones in the book that does not mm -hmm. have a photograph, but um, the Brussels sprout gratin on page 253. Mm -hmm. Okay. with um, speck. So it's kind of like a pastrami sandwich in a gratin or a corned beef special, you know, because speck, if people don't know, is just smoked prosciutto. So you get that little bit of smoke and you can get it, you know, sliced in the supermarket yeah. usually, um, but you could use prosciutto if you wanted to. Um, but that smokiness, it really adds something. And then it's got shredded Brussels sprouts. And, mm -hmm. and then I like to use Carissa's pickle variety, which we which can we get out here. Well. Yeah, and, but you could, any like grainy rye bread and then that goes on top for the crunch. But, um, and it does have cream, it's delicious. I love this because you can find these ingredients. I mean, you can swap out the oh, yeah. other things, but, yeah. but you can find these ingredients anywhere. You've got Brussels right. sprouts, olive oil, shallots, yeah. snack, black pepper, heavy cream, yeah. grainy mustard, rye bread, and caraway seeds. Yeah, and if the, uh, if, if the bread has caraway in it, uh, that this, all those flavors to me, I mean, I'm Jewish and I grew up eating corned beef sandwiches. And so it's sort of like, and I love a corned beef special with coleslaw. So it's sort of similar, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, speck, caraway, rye, get it? <laughs> <laughs> and it cooks for 35 to 40 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Because I yeah. know oven, oven space is always at a premium unless you live at Susan's yep. 10 grills. You, you could prep that. Up. That's one, one of the things in my book is telling you what you can make ahead. So I'm pretty sure this one, you could get it all set up mm -hmm. and then you could stick it in the oven as your turkey is coming back, you know, resting. And the bread that we mentioned, the Carissa's oh, yeah. pickled rye, um, yeah. Carissa is a bakery out in the Hamptons and uh, they have this, this pickled rye bread that uh, it is one of the best breads I've ever had. I think you can do mail order for it. Yep. It's I the one had... thing they ship nationwide, oh. so you can oh. order it because it keeps really well. Donna, if you can find a link to Carissa's, uh, you can yeah. put it in there because it's it's really uh, just out of this world. Um, uh, Melissa, what are you doing for dessert? 
Um, I don't know yet. We're going to do a pie for sure. I'm not sure. My, you know, I have to, so I love pumpkin pie best. My mm -hmm. husband loves apple pie best. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think we're going to let my, our daughter kind of call it. So we'll either do apple or, or pumpkin. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll make it together. I'm definitely making a pie with Dahlia this year. Yeah. She okay. is, um, she seems ready to get really into it. Um, so we'll see either apple or pumpkin, you know, cl we're classics. We're just total classic when it comes to pie, because I mean, how often do I get to make a pie? And then it's just the three of us. How often do I get to make a pie that only three people will eat? Although I guess I, I, know. I will share it with my mother. So I'm, I'm trying not to overdo it. Like I still want to make 10 things, but uh, I, yeah. I think one of my guests is bringing a pie as well. And she, I think doesn't really eat sugar. So she'll bring her like, you know, version. <laughs> Okay. And then actually somebody reached out and said, oh, can we send you a pie just today because of our Instagram, I, I mean, because of this event, she said, uh, well, your friend Evan, she said, can I send you, a, can I send you a pie from Bianqui? And I was like, sure. I think, I think she's sending me a pie. Melissa, <laughs> Melissa, if you need a pie, we'll, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I went for chocolate pecan because that seemed le oh. like the one I wouldn't make because I'm going to, I'm going to try to do my little tartlets. And then I have like a ton of apples in the fridge. So I'll try to make an apple pie, but I don't know for sure I'm going to do that. I went for the chocolate pecan too, because I love a pecan pie. Mm -hmm. um, Melissa, I was about to just ask you this and actually Candace jumped in and said thoughts on special whipped creams. I was mm. curious, Melissa, what you top your pies with mm. when you serve them. Um, I like whipped cream, like a whipped cream, creme fraiche combo, because I like the tang. Me too. So when you say combo, is it half cream, half creme fresh? It's about half and half, yeah. Yeah. And whip them really lightly together. Yeah. Um, no sweetening in that, you know, because the pie is already sweet, just like super yeah. sweet. That's So that's kind of the standard that we do. Okay. Um, however, I will not kick ice cream off my plate. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 have to, I have to concur with that because I really love whipped creme fresh, mm -hmm. either, either as a combo or on its own. It whips up so beautifully mm -hmm. and it's really delicious on pies. And um, I'm not a big fan of, you know, sh your classic schlag, which is whipped cream. Um, I'm just, I'd rather eat ice cream than whipped cream myself. Oh, I love whipped cream. I, I, I will just eat whipped cream. I love it, but by itself in a way, or you know what's whipped cream, ha it's like on hot chocolate. Like you don't want whipped cream uh, fresh on hot chocolate. Well, that's different. That's different. But on a dessert, I'd rather have like ice cream or creme um, fresh. I'm with you with the, uh, Ice cream. I love a la mode. Any, uh, me too. A la mode, anything. Um, okay, so Candace, we answered that question. Um, let's talk pie crust. We had a yeah. pie panel on Monday. And people just had a million questions about pie crust. You know, pie crust can be intimidating. So, Melissa, since you I are doing know. pie, where do you even start with your your pie crust? Okay, so I have changed my pie crust over the years because I keep trying new things. Mm -hmm. um, and right now I'm in all butter. I mean, I do like, I mean, I love lard in a crust. Like I really do like the flakiness of it, but I just love the flavor of butter, you know? And I just, so I, I, and again, this changes all the time. Like, I feel like I keep changing my mind, but if this one moment right now, I'm all butter um, and I've been doing it by hand. I used to do it in the food processor okay. and um, I've just find that I get flakier results by hand. So I do, you know, the classic just smoosh and I love smushing. Who doesn't love to smush butter? Like it's so fun. Especially this year. Yeah, it's just so fun. So it's like swish, 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 swish. And, um, and then, yeah, it's just classic butter, all butter. And you swish it together and uh, don't add too, you know, add, uh, you do have to add enough water, but not too much. That's the hardest thing I think for people. Yeah, I agree. It's just have like you tried the adding, some people were talking about how they use vodka instead of water. I don't think it makes a big difference to use vodka. I don't think it makes vodka. a difference. I don't think it makes a difference. I, I think know. it's a gimmick. I think it's a gimmick. It's you like, do. okay. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I mean, I've done it with vodka and I, I cannot say that it is any flakier, to be honest. I've and done it with vinegar. Some people love the vinegar. Yeah. You do some, vinegar? Yes. I think uh, somebody mentioned 4 and 20 blackbirds in the comments who we love. I love them. And I think, don't they put a little vinegar or apple they cider? They do. Right. I, I mean, some people, some people say it helps break down the gluten. I think if you tasted them or side by side, I think there'd be a very minute, if any, perceptible difference. Mm -hmm. So more important is technique and mm -hmm. temperature, yeah. you know, and I like, like Melissa, sometimes I go back and forth, but I'm doing a lot of batches. 
I might use a food processor. I also like making it by hand, but I kind of have a hybrid method where I started in the food processor so I can cut the butter in quickly when it's very cold because it can be hard to break down with your hands. Then I dump it in a bowl, finish smushing and, and bring it together in a bowl. Because I think when you somebody does it in the food processor who isn't used to making pie crust, very easy to over process it yeah. when you add the liquid. Because then you're, if you don't do it quick, so that's why I like to put it in a bowl and use a fork to add the liquid. Once yeah. I've cut the butter in, I actually get really good results doing it that way. Yeah, that's smart. That makes sense to me. Exactly, because yeah. that's when you that's when you over process when you add the liquid. Yeah, um, yeah. One thing yeah. I heard about for the first time this year was chilling your flour. Absolutely, yeah. everything. Only yeah. in the summer, though. Only in the summer. If everything, if the environment is warm, look, the colder everything is, the better. But also, people go a little bit crazy sometimes with all of those kind of like, oh, it's got to be, and that's what scares people. You know, it's like if your flower is room temperature and it's not ninety degrees out, it's going to be okay. <laughs> Plus, it's going to be thing okay. I mean, I think I think what you said before about the butter being cold. So what I do yeah. is, and this is like a standard thing. It's not, it's yeah. like you, you cut your butter into cubes, right? Yeah. You cut yeah. your butter, then you put it in the, then you put it back in the fridge. Or yeah, the absolutely. Freezer. Or the freezer. Yeah, the I do that too. really good. Put the, your butter cubes in the yeah. freezer before you start smush, smush, smushing. Absolutely. And you're going to, yeah. it's going to have a, you're going to have not over, you, and you, you know, it's impossible right. to over process with your fingers too. Yeah. But yeah. In the food processor frozen butter is key yeah 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 allison is giving a thumbs up for the vinegar she said vinegar makes it flaky have you tried it side by side oh grate the butter no way i think grating butter it's like it gets it can soften too quickly yeah i, mean, I, I don't think grating the butter is a thing you know again if you grated it and then put it back in the freezer maybe but i think once you've grated it it starts to melt very fast so and then it clumps together if you grate yeah, it I'm, not, this, I'm not a fan it, of you that it, you, and then you put it back in the freezer then it clumps and then you're like well why did i just do that <laughs> so but also let me just say if you have a technique that works for you yeah, yeah absolutely. like i mean and keep trying yeah. keep experimenting i really believe right. that i've tried I, every time i see a new pie crust method i try it yeah so, i agree i'm gonna i want to try like maybe uh uh aaron mcdowell's for if i do an apple pie yeah. i'm gonna try her her flaky af we have a, we have a demo with uh aaron oh okay. i gotta I, watch it yeah i use yeah. her recipe a lot actually her like that's like the her thing and i, I mean again it's all the smush smush smushing i yeah. love that it's yeah actually really so <laughs> i'll try it i don't know if it's going to be that different than what i already do but we'll see <laughs> somebody just uh oh hold on i lost my we had our pie all-star talk on monday and aaron was part of that and someone said carrie i'm surprised you did not mention the butter topping from the all-star baking segment um, Amanda Mack from Crust by Mack in Baltimore does a pumpkin butter that she puts on top of the pie. What about the pumpkin butter? She serves the pie that? with pumpkin yeah. butter on top of it oh. a, a, in, instead of whipped cream or instead of olive. Oh, that sounds good. That oh, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. I love pumpkin butter good. and apple butter. Love that. Yeah, me too. There you go. I just and I have I just made pear butter. I have a ton of pear Ooh. butter. Ooh, Yum. that sounds nice. All right. So I really pumpkin, love it. Is this Karen or Corinne Bradley wants to know, how do you keep the shape of the crust? Well, I mean, you, know, you got to chill it. Yeah, yeah. You chilling it. every step. Yep, every step. And yeah. that's the only thing. And then hotter oven. Uh-huh. Hotter oven it's keeps the, the well, yeah. well, so if you do it at a lower, like, I, what do you start yours at, Susan? 425 or 400? 400. And then you, then you can, what? 400. That's what but, I um, you know, the other thing I think around the edge is you don't want too much dough. Like if, and you want to trim it evenly because mm -hmm. if you have like a lot over here and not as much over there, then it's going to get, it'll get wonkier in the oven, which I don't think is a bad thing. There's one more movie I did that you didn't mention. It's called Labor Day. And I had oh, to make right. a really, I was trying to make a very, the director, Jason Reitman, wanted a really like ugly pie. He kept uh -huh. saying, like it has to be like really messy and shitty and horrible and you know like dripping and I just like couldn't do it. It was so hard to make an ugly pie because oh I would have come and done it for you. I could make <laughs> really ugly pies. My pie, but, but even an ugly, ugly pie is beautiful. That's the thing. It's the rustic charm. That's what we love about it. So 
you know, it's like, it just, it's very hard to mess up a pie in my opinion. So I don't know why people are so nervous and don't be nervous, make a pie. I, I can't be bad. There's just been so much mythology built around pies. I know. Susan, that's what's nice about your um, squash and pomegranate cranberry pie. It's a graham cracker crust. Exactly, and it, you cannot mess that up unless you burn For those it. those of us like me who are intimidated. Uh, it's so easy and, and it also tastes so good, you know, I love it. So. I love a graham cracker crust. Me too. I love a graham cracker crust. Yeah. So we have another question from Kelly. I missed the pie episode and this might have been discussed, but when you put the crust in the pan, should I fold the extra dough under or over for crimping? Susan, you said you cut it, right? Well, I, okay. I like to use, you know, if you have a turntable that you might use for cake, mm -hmm. I like to put it on that and take my scissors and spin it around and cut as I go okay. so that you have about that much and half an inch or uh -huh. an inch and then fold it under okay and then do what you want with it Got so it. that you have a nice even thing now if you're doing a double crust pie it's different you that's only if you're doing an open pie then you might crimp that pie but if you're doing a double crust then you put the top crust on then maybe use a little bit of water to seal it up then trim it mm -hmm. then fold it under and then do a fork or a crimp or whatever you're going to do okay Okay, and then Michael's asking, do you know a good brand of gluten-free graham crackers? I don't. <laughs> I'm always surprised that the people are gluten-free. I'm not gluten-free, so I don't know any of this stuff, but the people who are, they should already know that. I, I would hope there is one, but or I don't know Or maybe he's making it. it, maybe Michael's making uh, it for someone some else. Guests I, don't, I don't know anything about, I haven't heard, I, I know there's a lot of good flowers, but like the Bob Red, Bob's Red Mill um, Cup mm -hmm. for Cup and the other if anybody, cup. Who's in, if anybody who's in attendance can recommend a ah, brand of yes, I don't know. crackers for Michael, just mention it in the comments. Um, okay, let's move on. We're actually going to go backwards because somebody asked a great question. Karen Schulman wants some hors d'oeuvre ideas. Oh. I love hors d'oeuvres. That's that okay. might be my favorite part. Well, I have to say the ones in the Times today, Ina Garten's uh, <laughs> Cacio e Pepe, uh, she called them cheese puffs, but they're Gougere. Those look delicious. <laughs> Um, and I have a little cheese cracker in my book. Uh -huh. I think that's a good one because I don't like to serve. Gougere is so easy to make. Yeah, and these are my smoky cheddar crackers. Ooh. Okay. Mm. Those and they healthy. have, yeah, they have smoked paprika to give it some smoke and turmeric and cayenne and, mm -hmm. and smoked almonds. So if you love smokehouse almonds and these are really easy, you can make them ahead of time. You okay. can make the dough ahead of time. But if you want something lighter, I mean, I don't like to serve too much before Thanksgiving because I think people are going to eat. I but may maybe something like uh, Andive petals filled with something because, you know, we want things that people can pick up without double dipping and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So um, okay, anything. Got... Okay, you got one. <laughs> I've got my, I have one. Actually, it's from the kids book. This is really fun. Oh. So these are um, Crackeritos. Oh. So, Crackeritos, you know that really oh. tacky recipe that you take saltines and you toss them with ranch dressing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know. Do you know that? Okay. So I did that. I did like a homemade version of that. You take okay. saltines or any crackers or gluten free crackers. We tried it specifically with gluten free crackers and it works great. And you toss them with oil and then different spice mixes mm -hmm. and then you bake them. And they oh. are like the, they're like, crack you can't stop they're just crunchy Ooh, okay. oh, you shouldn't say crack. sorry take that back but they're crack, delicious you, you just eat them and well we're both suggesting crackers so. i know i think because you want to do i think you're right susan something light you don't right yeah. you i don't know i'm gonna be honest if i'm going to somebody's house or people are coming to mine which isn't happening this year um i don't know i might want a little more than a cracker well, well, no, I then love you, serve it, you, serve that with, you serve it with a dip then you do okay. like a cheesy dip yeah. and like some yummy thing and it's just like you know, yeah. you wouldn't just do a cracker because then right? who just want to eat a cracker? I, well, I just think you don't want to, you don't want to over, I like to, I get to the food pretty quickly on, mm -hmm. on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And um, I also really like these local potato chips out here by my friend, Marley Foster, who is a far wonderful farmer. You have to oh, bring no. her to Jubilee. The, what are they called? Oh, they're called tiger spuds, but uh, you can only okay. buy them at her farm stand, but they're the best potato chip ever. Um, you might be able to order them. I don't know. Oh, um, you could do that. You could do like um, sour cream, caviar, potato chips. Yeah. Right? <laughs> there you so go. So simple. So good. But cheese, cheese is a mistake. Don't serve cheese because why people cheese, get too why full. Cheese is a mistake. Oh, people get too oh, full. Oh, people get too full. Yeah. Okay. I think if you want to have cheese, make it part of dessert. 
Okay. Okay. But I would do a cheese. I would do a cheesy dip though. I would do like a blue yeah, cheese. Yeah, that's dip fine. But people tend to overeat cheese for, for yeah, if you put it out and then it's it's so filling that's the problem yeah, no that's true that's definitely yeah. true i i have to confess how about I, shrimp um, people like shrimp people like shrimp and cocktail. that's right or oysters yeah. oysters yeah oysters classic. oysters yeah okay i don't know about shrimp i don't know shrimp on oh for some reason wait, someone just said i do butternut soup in tiny cups i have done that as well i actually nice. have a box of shot glasses that i bought just for that and i serve soup to everyone a little bit of soup which is also a great idea i made one year i don't even remember how i did it but i made a butternut squash dip i had yeah. roasted um oh that sounds good i roasted right. some butternut yeah. squash just like whipped it up and yeah. then put pomegranate yeah. on it and perfect it was fabulous yeah that sounds great, oh, great. and someone says to serve um leslie says homemade pickled vegetables that's perfect like yeah a relish any vegetable tray. i'm all for vegetables yeah yeah but they I think of like a relish tray like with pickles and celery and, all, and if it's homemade olives, it's even better yeah that's for olives it's perfect I love pig and blankets anytime, even on Thanksgiving. Sorry, Susan. I know that. Bias. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm not a snob. <laughs> no, I know you're not a snob, but you were suggesting like something nice and light in, oh. an, in an undine. Well, okay. So okay. One good. round of pigs and blanket. Okay. <laughs> okay. How about this? Stuffed mushrooms, but stuffed. Oh, yeah. Mushrooms, nice. Right? Like classic. Okay. You know what my friend used to do back in like our college days? They'd buy like Stouffer spinach souffle and cut it up and put it in mushrooms and put that in the oven. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a, that actually sounds really good. All right. Before I lose you two, let's talk uh, what we're drinking on Thanksgiving. Uh, oh, gosh. You just reminded me we meant to go to the wine store. We forgot. <laughs> Wine. Wine. Of course. So, Melissa, you'll have your daughter, so you obviously have to have um, some non-alcoholic beverage. Anything, anything festive? Apple, cranberry. Oh, do you know what we have? I actually I made a Concord grape syrup this year. Ooh. So it's like a Concord grape simple syrup. I have it in the fridge. So I'll make her. I've been making her like when we do cocktail time. She'll uh, we'll do a special Concord grape drink for her. Mm. Or nice. or you know apple cider is great. I mean if. Yeah, I get, I'm going to go to the farmer's market on Saturday and I'll get some apple cider. So, or maybe apple and Concord grape, maybe some, and then with seltzer, like make her a little soda. Something yeah. like that. I might do some hot cider also because it's lunch and we're outside. So that's not, that's a really good idea. That actually Which, is a really you good put anything, idea. Any spices, Susan, that you add to it? Oh, just the usual cinnamon sticks. If I had cardamom pods, pods I might put a few of those in there, but I don't. <laughs> um, I have a lot of star anise right now, but I think that might be too strong. So I don't know. What do you think, Melissa? What else I could I put in? I would do star anise. I mean, just okay. for a whole pot, not in each cup. Yeah, one, one. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, Daniela, one. Daniela Wiener, who's out there, said, I just made a cranberry sangria. That sounds great. Ooh, that, Ooh, sounds, that sounds good. good. Oh, I like I that. I have so many cranberries. Like I do so too. Many. I should do, I, maybe a cran, I, I like that idea. Are you two uh, homemade cranberry or yeah. cranberry sauce? Yeah. Homemade. Oh no, I'm not, no, no can, no. Mm -mm. I don't like it, I never did. Yeah, it's, we, it's okay, it. but. I think you have to grow up with it to like it. Am I wrong? I don't know. Well, like, I think, alcohol. yeah, I mean, my mom started making homemade pretty long time ago. Yeah. Um, and I also really love a, a raw relish. Me as too, well. a raw relish yeah. with nuts. Love yes. that. Raw yeah, I have, I, yeah, I've love done, it. I did a recipe for one that you take a whole clementine with the skin and everything, uh -huh. raw, whole cranberries, yeah. fresh or frozen, mm -hmm. fresh work better. Uh, walnuts and um, uh, apple, Granny Smith apple, and just like put that in the food processor yeah, and I buzz it up. That. It's yeah. delicious. Wow. And that's what we always had when I was growing up, raw cranberry relish. Yeah, it's I really awesome. like it. Exactly. It's I so fresh. I a little cooked, cooked cranberry sauce, which is so easy. If you don't make yeah. your own cranberry sauce, yeah. it's, I don't know what you're missing because, and you don't even- Follow the package. I Follow the directions beans. on the package, sorry. <laughs> It's a lot of sugar on the package, so I'll you do- You don't have to use that much. I'll do orange juice and honey, and it, yeah. it comes out fantastic. Yeah. Um, okay, so Alexis, our friend Alexis, who's a tea expert out there, she said, apple cider steeped with smoked Lapsang Sushang tea. Oh, that's nice. Ooh. Cinnamon sticks and clove. It's like Ooh. sitting at a campfire while drinking apple cider. Very oh, nice. Oh, I love that. Absolutely. Mm. All right. We have a few more minutes for questions. Uh, let's see, we've got a question in here from Amy Harper. Do you make dinner rolls? Not, not usually. Stuff. Not with the stuff. No, it's too many carbs, too yeah. filling. I mean, I love the idea of it, but for me, it's too much. 
All right. Uh, oh, this is a good one to end on, Rachel. Thank you. Um, favorite leftover recipes? Uh, <laughs> sandwiches. I, yeah, I mean, I love a cla I love a sandwich more so. Walk but you have, to make you have Melissa, to make stock. Melissa, walk us through your sandwich. Um, I mean, okay. I mean, pretty much I do like pretty classic. I'll do, you know, I mean, we're not going to have turkey this year, so it's going to be different, but let's just pretend. Okay. So it's turkey. I like the stuffing in the sandwich. Yep. I like the cranberry relish in the sandwich. Um, I usually will do um, a, like a hot spicy mayo. So I'll do mayo with some kind of like chili paste in there and throw that in. And yeah. um yeah, that's pretty much it. Like really simple, but my just thing is just to add the spiciness with a spicy mayo on top of whatever else you're gonna do. What about you, Susan? What do you do? Well, I did make something the other a couple of years ago, but now I'm for trying to remember what it was. But it was like all the leftovers in one gratin dish. Oh, nice. oh, I think I put the mashed potatoes on top. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so it was like kind of like pie. a shepherd pie, yeah. and that was delicious. So I took turkey and gravy and. I don't remember what else. I'm going to have to go back. I think at the time I thought, oh, this is whatever. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I put the potatoes on top and then I baked it. And then I actually brought it to a party that was like supposed a next day party. And it was really good. Sounds fun. great. Daniela does um, Thanksgiving leftover hand pies. That sounds great. Oh, that sounds great. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you on the sandwich though. I love a Martin's potato roll toasted sliced turkey stuffing yeah. cranberry yeah. sauce and then yeah. um i didn't do spicy mayo i might try that melissa i usually that do a good. little mayo mustard combo situation yeah and the mustard gives it that tang yeah. oh you know what else I, is good i on like honey pickles? mustard what pickles yeah. Pickles. Oh, pickles. pickles. I like have, I have that on my barbecue sandwich today. That was really good. Nice. <laughs> I like nice. coleslaw. I like coleslaw too, but in this case, I would do uh, the cramp, the raw relish, I think would be really good, but the cooked sauce is as well. And I really like honey mustard with turkey. Yeah. Okay. That's good. People yeah. are giving great suggestions. Um, Candace said Fellini's in Providence makes a Thanksgiving pizza. Candace, what is on that pizza? Oh. You have to share with us. And then we've got <laughs> turkey hash. Turkey corn moussaka with leftover turkey. These all wow. sound good. I wow. like it. Yeah, we could do a show just, oh, actually, we might be doing a whole uh, demo next week just on leftovers. So ah. a popover bar filled with the leftovers. Leslie, that's a wow. great yeah, mm. I love that. I love right. that. Well, this is coming to an end. I'm going to show you your cookbooks again because I love them so much. We've got Susan's Open Kitchen. Such a gorgeous book, Susan. Did you want me to hold it on this side? No, no, no. Susan liked it on this side. But... <laughs> no, because it's on here on my screen. It's behind the thing. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'll, show, I'll cover my face with it, Susan. We'll do, <laughs> we'll do a do-over. How's that? Susan's book. Oh, perfect. There we go. <laughs> and we've got Melissa's book. Okay, so gorgeous books. You two are amazing. Thank you for just all the good energy you put out into the world and all the good recipes. And I just adore you both. And um, I guess last question, what are you each most thankful for this year? My health mm -hmm. and my family. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I'm so thankful for everything. I feel so lucky. I yeah. feel like I, I just, I mean, yeah our, yeah, our our families and our community, our community. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So that's all of you guys, every one of you. Oh, yeah. um, I feel very lucky to have the bomb squad and yeah. um, so grateful that you two are part of the bomb squad and, and friends. And I can't thank you enough for doing this today. And to everyone who tuned in, I also want to thank all of you. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> we could talk to these two about food forever, <laughs> uh, but we'll keep it to an hour. Um, plug. Pellegrino again, thanks to our sponsors like Pellegrino. So I just bought two bottles. You did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. You really did. Right. Oh, and Dusty just jumped up to say goodbye to everybody. So say bye. Uh, Dusty. Bye, Dusty. <laughs> all yeah, right, everyone. Bye, bye, everybody. Wishing you all happy holiday and happy Friendsgiving. <laughs>